fellow engineers. We are the GT Puma Senior Design Team, and I am Carson Conway. This is Rolando Roca, Ricky Hayes, Tomas Garcia, and Laura Bellar. Today we will be discussing with you our design, our design project, which involved creating a personal computer-based multi-axis controller with which to interface to a robot by providing direct current motor control via a graphical user interface. And it's noteworthy that we are the first group that has gained control of the robot um, using a computer-based approach. Potential clients for the use of our controller include industrial robot managerial staff, as the robot we've used for the entire semester is currently used in such applications as industrial painting, spot welding, and plasma cutting. The main motivation of our project was the ability to use a modern control card and modern implementation techniques to successfully control and manipulate a robot. Ultimately, this controller will be developed to the point where it will be used as a plug-and-play system for use on any six-axis robot. And all told, after the final purchase of all materials necessary to successfully complete our project, the total cost was around $16,000, which will be um, touched on later. The nature of our project presented a notable engineering duality in that our team um, we had to complete work in both hardware and software fields in order to get the robot working. In the software section of our goal, the, the main goal was to create the PC-based controller and GUI with which to control the robot. And in order for that specification to be met, there were several technical objectives which through the course of the semester we had to satisfy. The first, we used uh, DC servo motors to control the robot and initially we proposed to be able to move the each robot axis within 10 encoder counts in either direction of our specified location and this was achieved. Next, our target maximum loaded rotational velocity was 10 degrees per second so basically we wanted each axis to be able to move at least 10 degrees per second and after final testing this was achieved and surpassed by a great amount as most axes are in the 50 or 40 degree rotational range. Next, the motion limits, we wanted to implement using potentiometers, using the voltage from a potentiometer, and we ended up achieving it with encoders, adding increased accuracy. A fine home position was implemented with potentiometers as we proposed. And our final demonstration will take place next Thursday, and as of now, we have complete control of all six robotic axes and the first four axes have full range of motion and we plan to get axes five and six with full range of motion within the next week. As aforementioned, the hardware implementations of our project would allow the PC-based GUI to directly control the robot. And we integrated several individual hardware components such as motor amplifiers, power supplies, and terminal blocks into a hardware enclosure box for safety. And this hardware enclosure box, as you can see, was proposed to have dimensions of 30 inches by 30 inches by 24 inches. However, after final fabrication, we were able to cut this overall volume uh, by nearly half to 56% of our original proposal. We dissipated heat from our system using, using forced air cooling with the use of two exhaust fans. And for safety measures, obviously safety measures are important in any project in which electricity is the main source of power. So initially, we had an emergency stop button, and this was achieved, in addition to cable ties for the different wires that we had, and integrated fuse and protective panels for non-insulated terminals. The, inter or the input output connection for the overall system was originally two very high density cable interfaces and uninsulated bare terminals for robot interface, and this was achieved, and instead of the the bare wire, we actually use an ELCO adapter for the robot. And finally, the power input was a 120 volt AC connection with an added inline switch for added versatility. And now Rolando will speak to you about the wiring in our project. Well, in this picture right here, you can see what we inherited from the previous uh, senior design team that worked on the same project. And they were trying to use a programmable logic controller to uh, do the motion control of the uh, six-axis robot, and basically, since uh, these wires were not labeled and they were using a different platform, we couldn't use any of this uh, work that they had done. 
Next you see what our current project looks like and this is all the work we've done and throughout this presentation you'll get to learn how we did this and why we did it and how it plays an important part of our project. When designing our uh, platform, we first uh, thought about the hardware components and we uh, decided to set up a test bench for a single axis, both unloaded and loaded motor, and then we uh, continued to design and build a, an, a hardware enclosure box in which we would house all the different components of our system. From a software perspective, we have the uh, we set up a GUI so that we could control a single unloaded motor, and we added up to it so that we could control a, a loaded uh, motor. After that, we continue adding up some more functionalities that let us control up to six axes. And after this, we were able to servo tune uh, our our system with the six different axes. Now, to complete our project, we have been already started uh, to. Uh, set the home position and the limit values for uh, the range of motion of uh, the different axes. We have already completed the uh, multi-movement commands so that we now are we're able to move in series and parallel the whole six axes of the robot arm. And we have uh, scheduled our final demo for Thursday of next week. First of all, we started by setting up a test bench for unloaded single motor. And for this, we used the uh, very common components available in our lab, like the 5 volt supply. We use an external 24, 24 volts DC supply, and uh, we use a 68, also we use a 68 pin breakout board that would give access to all of the different pins in the controller card that is, con is going to be connected in the PCI port on, on the PC. And we also use a TA115 uh, amplifier which is a configurable amplifier that we can change the current so that we can supply more current to uh, each motor. And uh, in this setup, we were able to uh, test each connection and also label all the wires that we were going to use. And next, after finishing that part, we continue to test the loader motor. And as you can see, it's pretty much the same uh, method of testing. We use the same equipment and we just move that single motor and we place it in the base of the uh, six axis robot and with this we achieve uh, to have the, that load on the motor and after we did this we, uh, we were able to set the home position for the single motor and we also set up the software limits so that we would know we would set up where we wanted the motor to stop rotating and to avoid any physical damage to the actual robot um, now, next, Rick is going to explain you a little bit more about the hardware and closure box. Well, the uh, CAD layout that we designed prior to purchasing any hardware enclosure or panel to mount our hardware on, um, the dimensions are based on an enclosure that we spec'd out to have proper airflow and hope to purchase in the future. <coughs> this is the actual physical implementation we used um, prior to receiving the enclosure. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have a 5 volt and 24 volt supplies, uh, each of which, well, as a whole, they supply power to the six motor amplifiers as well as power to the six encoders on each motor and the single channel that goes to the potentiometer. Um, the Elko connector is specific to the robot application we chose, which was a Puma 560 robot. Um, it allows us to interface with all the connections on the robot, uh, be it the encoders, the motor signals, the breakout boards are used to interface with the personal computer. Um, this gives us feedback from the robot that we can use within um, the software we wrote. Um, we chose to use wire channels because we have such an immense amount of wires. Um, this is organizational and uh, through labeling it's easier to debug and um, as well as if we had ever upgraded or had to do any maintenance. Um, we also chose to implement an e-stop button. Uh, this e-stop button is connected to the six uh, motor amplifiers you see on the screen, as well as the brake on the motor. So once you release the button, the motors will stop and there will be no signals to the motors themselves. Um, the GIF you see on the right is multiple angles and pictures of the different components of our enclosure. Um, the enclosure itself was actually donated to us by Dr. Michaels. It's a NEMA Type 1 electrical enclosure. Um, we also chose to utilize terminal blocks uh, because we have those three motor uh, 
power supplies, and we have only a single input signal, so we had to route 120 volts AC to three different components. Um, we also had to use them on the 5 volt power supply because we had 13 different signals that needed 5 volts. Uh, we also fabricated uh, uh, AC power inter interface. This was comprised of a standalone switch, uh, an AC plug connector, as well as an inline fuse. Um, as opposed to the prior team, we labeled the input and output to every wire. This facilitates in any type of upgrade, as said before, or any maintenance that might need to be done. And now Tomas will talk about the software side of our project.